in a couple of minutes, I'm going to tell you why we might care about this first. But I actually want to not just look at an example of this. I want to prove that this is not just a coincidence. I want to see that this always happens. Okay? So underneath this, make a little subheading for me and call this generalization. Because what you just had a look at was something specific, a particular polynomial, and what particularly happens with those numbers. Now I want to look at something general. What happens with any quadratic? no matter what the numbers are. Okay, so I'm going to call this p of x, instead of having numbers like 3, 15, and 18, a general quadratic would be a, because it could be anything, and b, and c. So I'm going to write it like so. ax squared plus bx plus c. Now I went through this process of factorized, da, 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 I got two zeros out of that, and then I named the zeros. I called them alpha and beta. But because this could be any, polyno any quadratic I like, right? I don't know what alpha and beta are. I don't know if they're negative 2 and negative 3, or 1 and 8, or who knows what they are. Okay? So all I can call them is alpha and beta. So I'm just going to say, let the zeros of this particular polynomial, this quadratic, let them be alpha and beta. Okay. Now what I want to do is write this new quadratic in terms of alpha and beta. Where are alpha and beta in my rewriting of the polynomial? Here they are, here and here, right? So if you knew what the zeros were, that would tell you what the factorization was, right? So I can rewrite p of x like so, in a factorized form. What would be the factorization? Have a look at how we set this up, right? I'll give you a clue. There's going to be some x's in here, right? What follows? What follows after this? If, for example, you had some polynomial, any polynomial, and its roots were 1 and 2, 1 and 2, what would the factorization look like? x, hmm, it's going to be a 1 and a 2 in here, right? A 1 and a 2. What's going to go in between? Think carefully. The zeros are 1, positive 1, and 2 positive 2. This is, there's going to be a minus sign in between there, right? Because, think about this first part here, if I put x equals 1 into here, bam, that becomes 0, which is the whole point. Then I don't care what the other thing is, because 0 times anything is 0. And the same thing with this, if that's, if I put in x equals 2, right, then I will get that. Now, I don't actually know that they're 1 and 2, but I think they're alpha and beta, right? So I'm going to call these guys alpha and Beta, are you okay with that? Mm -hmm. Yep, looking good. There's just one small problem. Have a look back at what we did. You guys factorized this for me. You told me this is what we ended up with. There's a piece in this line that's missing in that line over there. Do you see what's missing? Three. Yeah, this guy at the front, right? Where did three come from? It was the coefficient of what? The coefficient of, the where did we get from? Term. Yes, the coefficient of the leading term, which is why we call it the leading coefficient, right? So where does it belong over here? It just belongs at the front here. Does that make sense? A. Now just think about this for a minute before we leave off this idea here. Notice please that A could be anything. It could be 3, could be 1, it could be negative 2, 800, and the zeros would still be alpha and beta. Do you see that? Like you can change this however you like and you'll still get the same answers. Okay. Now here comes the magic. I want to prove these two guys. I want to prove that what happens when you add up these two roots, you'll always get that. When you multiply these two roots, you'll always get this, right? So what I'm going to do, switch into orange because this is me talking about these results now. I'm going to take this guy and make it look more like the original line and try and do a comparison, okay? This is factorized. That's expanded. So let's see what happens when I expand this, right? What am I going to get? I'll deal with this guy first. If you were to expand this, this is in terms of alphas and betas, right? I'm going to have to do first, outside, inside, last. That's normally how I expand things like that. So x times x. Okay, next term. What would you like to write down next? Minus uh, this guy times this, so minus beta x. So uh, I've dealt with the first guy. What should be the next thing that I write? Minus alpha x, so you've transitioned over to this, that guy there, last term. Very good, the negatives cancel, don't they? And this is what you get on the end, okay? So I've expanded, this is good, but I want to go one more step further. One more step, uh, maybe two. <laughs> Have a look. 
I've got an x squared term, just like I wanted over here. I've got a constant term as well, just like I've got over here. But then I've got, I've got two x terms, and I kind of just want to have one. So how will I turn these two into one? I'm going to factorize out this common x. You see that? So let's write the next line. Here we go. x squared. That guy's fine. There's no collecting of like terms that you can do with this guy. But in between here, have a look. If I take out my common factor of x, what do you get left with? Beta. You get beta, yeah. and you also get um. alpha. Now you can see I've written a minus sign here as well, so therefore I'm going to get alpha plus beta. I know it's a little unusual. When we factorize things out, we usually write them at the front. But when we write x's, we usually write them on the end. So even though I'm factorizing it, I'm putting it at the back of that term. Okay? And then here's my last one. Right there. Is that all right? See that? OK, here comes the magic, right? What is this polynomial? It started off as this general guy here, ax squared plus bx plus c. That's what this is. I'm just looking at it a little bit differently. Okay? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide everything through by a, because that's going to make it look a lot nicer and simpler for me. Okay? So let's, let's just do this guy first. If I divide this ax squared by a, what do I get? Just x squared, just by itself. I've got to divide everything through by a, right? You can't just choose particular things. So if I divide this guy by a as well, what do you get? b over a. So I'm, I'm, I'm dividing that part. There's the coefficient. And then there's still an x there. Do you agree with that? That's OK. And then the last term on the left-hand side? C over a. Do those guys look familiar at all? They should, right? OK, what have I got on my right-hand side over here? Uh, I just have to write it without the a, right? Because I just divided through by a. So I'm just going to write everything over here. x squared minus this guy plus this guy. All right, now I know it just looks like a lot of algebra at the moment, okay? But what have we just said? What you're looking at is the same object, um, p of x, right? But you're looking at it kind of from two different angles. Same thing, right? This is from the point of view of just what were all the coefficients. And this is from the point of view of what are the zeros? Same object inspected from two sides. Now have a look here. Mm, what's a good color for this, right? There's an x squared here, right? And unsurprisingly, there's an x squared over here. And they look the same. You're like, these two things are equal to each other. No big deal. But then have a look at this guy here. See that? It has an equivalent, a match, on the other side. Do you see it? What's it matched up to? The x squared. It's, hold on. Wait, this is the x term, right? This is the x term? So it matches up to this guy? Do you agree with that? Do you see like they're kind of like twins, right? These are the only x terms on the left, and these are the only x terms on the right. So if they're equivalent to each other, doesn't it stand to reason that b on a x, this guy on the left, it equals that whole thing um, underneath the, or above my squiggly line, right? Minus alpha plus beta x. Do you agree with that? Like there's no other thing, there's no other place you get x terms from the left or the right. So these guys are like twins, right? Um, we can simplify this a little bit, can't we? I, I don't need to write the x's there. It's, it's really these two things that are really interesting, right? So I'm going to write b on a equals this. What's the last step I should do to get to my actual result that I wanted? I should divide through by negative 1 or multiply through by negative 1. Same effect, isn't it? Right? So I'm going to write alpha plus beta equals minus b on a. Whatever a and b happen to be, whatever alpha and beta happen to be, not just negative 2 and negative 3, for any values. Like I don't even have any numbers here. No numerical numbers anyway. I have, I have pronumerals, right? OK, so this is a result called the sum of roots. So what happens when you add up the roots, no matter what they are, you get this guy. Okay, uh, I'm not quite finished, am I? There's not just the sum of roots, there's also the, the product of roots. Can you see the product of roots over here on the right hand side? There he is, right there. Okay, so I'm going to put a box around it. What is its matching term on the left hand side? It's a C over A. C over A. In fact, this is even easier. You can pretty much just write straight away from these two things when you take alpha beta on the right hand side it very directly equals 
That guy, C on A. That's the only constant term on the left. Everything else has like weird X's sort of tied up within it, okay? But this is a constant term, a number, like say for example, six, it's just a number. And then this is just a number, right? Negative two times negative three. So these results that you've just proved, right? This is the proof of the result. This is the sum of roots. And this is the product of roots. Okay, now, to illustrate why this is interesting, why do we care about this, can I ask you to get your laptops out and pull open Desmos for me, 